What is your name? It is a specific sequence of sounds that you and others have attached to your identity. When you hear it, you turn your head. It's an auditory label for you. In the vast three-dimensional world of the ocean, a similar thing happens. A bottlenose dolphin calf, within the first few months of its life, will develop a unique, stereotyped whistle. This isn't just a random chirp. This is its signature whistle. It's a sound it will likely keep for its entire life, a distinct acoustic fingerprint in a world made of sound. For a long time, we suspected these whistles were special. But how do you prove a sound is a name? Researchers Stephanie King and Vincent Janik did something elegantly simple. Off the coast of Scotland, they recorded the signature whistles of wild dolphins. Then, they waited until the owners of those whistles were out of sight. Using underwater speakers, they played the recorded name back to the remaining pod. Invariably, the dolphins would turn and orient towards the speaker, searching for the absent friend. They were responding to the name, not just the dolphin. This response is a critical distinction. It demonstrates something called referential communication, the ability to use a symbol to refer to an object or individual that isn't currently present. It's the difference between a dog barking at a squirrel and you telling a friend about a squirrel you saw yesterday. The dolphins weren't just making a contact call like, is anyone there? Other dolphins were hearing a specific name. That's Michael and looking for Michael. This is a foundational element of true language. So where do these names come from? Unlike humans who are given names by their parents, dolphins appear to invent their own. A calf listens to the acoustic environment around it, particularly its mother's whistle. But it doesn't just copy it. Instead, it seems to use these sounds as inspiration, creating a novel whistle that is distinct from all others in its pod. This act of invention is a form of vocal production learning, an ability that is astonishingly rare in the animal kingdom. It is the capacity to create new sounds through imitation and modification. Most animals are vocal non-learners. A dog's bark is innate, it can't learn to meow. But a select few species are in the vocal learning club. Humans, obviously. Some birds, like parrots and hummingbirds. And a small, scattered group of mammals. Bats, elephants, seals, and, of course, cetaceans, like dolphins. Finding the common thread between these disparate groups is a deep evolutionary puzzle. Why would a bat, a dolphin, and a human all develop this complex skill, while our closer relatives like chimpanzees did not? The answer seems to lie in the wiring. In most mammals, vocalizations are governed by primitive circuits in the brainstem, responsible for instinctual sounds like cries of pain or fear. But in vocal learners, a direct neural pathway exists, connecting the motor cortex, the part of the brain responsible for voluntary movement, directly to the neurons that control the larynx, or in a dolphin's case, the phonic lips. This direct connection provides the hardware for conscious, deliberate control over the sounds one produces. It's the difference between a reflex and a conversation. Why evolve such a complex system? Look at their society. In places like Shark Bay, Australia, bottlenose dolphins live in one of the most complex social systems outside of humans. They form nested, multi-level alliances. There are first-order alliances of two or three males who cooperate to herd females. Then, these small groups form second-order alliances to compete with other groups. Keeping track of who is a friend, who is a rival, and who is an ally of a rival requires immense cognitive power. 
Names are not just labels, they are the nodes in this intricate social network. And the complexity doesn't stop there. Dolphins don't just use names to call each other. They have been observed copying the signature whistle of an absent third dolphin. Think about what that means. One dolphin can essentially say Michael to another dolphin, Sarah, when Michael isn't even around. This is the precursor to gossip. It's a way of sharing social information about others, a fundamental step towards syntax and the ability to convey complex ideas about the world, not just what's immediately present. To truly understand this, you have to appreciate their environment. Sound in water behaves very differently than in air. It travels about four and a half times faster and attenuates far less, allowing for communication over vast distances. In an often murky three-dimensional space where visibility can drop to zero, sight becomes a secondary sense. Their world is constructed primarily from acoustics. A signature whistle isn't just a name, it's a beacon, a point of light in an enormous, dark, and fluid cathedral. This acoustic reality has physically shaped their minds. A dolphin's brain is highly developed, but its architecture is different from ours. Their auditory cortex, the region that processes sound, is significantly more complex and relatively larger than in the human brain. They can perceive and process frequency changes and temporal patterns with a resolution that is almost unimaginable to us. Their names, which sound like simple whistles to our ears, are likely packed with layers of information we are currently deaf to. The contour we recognize might be just the surface layer of a much richer signal. So, what else is in the signal? Could a signature whistle also convey emotional state, direction of travel, or even a summary of recent events? Scientists are now moving beyond just listening. They are deploying advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze vast data sets of dolphin sounds. These algorithms hunt for subtle patterns in the clicks, burst pulses, and whistles, trying to find the syntax and grammar of a language completely alien to our own. It's a process of decoding, like being given a library of books in a language with no alphabet and no dictionary. Ultimately, the dolphin's name forces us to confront our own biases about intelligence and language. We often place ourselves at the top of a linear pyramid. But what if intelligence isn't a pyramid, but a tree with many different, equally complex branches? For 50 million years, an entirely different form of social intelligence and communication has been evolving in the ocean. They possess self-awareness, culture, and a system for referring to each other as individuals. The challenge isn't to teach them our language, but to finally become quiet enough to learn the basics of theirs. Monotony has grown fast. Nearly 2,700 people have watched in the last few weeks, yet less than 0.03% are subscribed. It would mean a lot if you joined by hitting subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.